So we have some beautiful scriptures to reflect on this morning and uh, some beautiful saints to reflect on as well. You know, Pope Benedict, when he was asked, what are the two great apologies or defenses for the Christian faith? He said, the art that the church has produced and the saints, the saints, the saints are these incredible witnesses that it's, it's, you can't argue with their lives, the beauty of their lives. And today we celebrate the beautiful lives, the martyrdoms of St. Paul Miki and companions. These are Japanese martyrs from the 16th century that they were men and women and children. They were young and old. That <clears throat> They were marched 600 miles <clears throat> to Nagasaki to a hill where they were tied to crosses and eventually lanced to death. How did all this happen? Well, let's back up. It was during the 16th century that the Catholic faith reached Japan through the preaching and the efforts of St. Francis Xavier and the Jesuit missionaries. The Jesuits, after Francis' death, the Jesuits continued to evangelize the people of Japan so that after, uh, about around the year 1587, about 200,000 Christians, 200,000 Catholics could be counted in the country of Japan. Now, there was some religious tension, there was some persecution that was happening but it wasn't producing a lot of martyrdom. And in the succeeding years, about another 100,000 Christians were added on um, to those numbers. The efforts of missionaries happening very clandestinely, very secretly, despite the restrictions that were put on them by the uh, authorities of Japan. During the year of 1593, Franciscan missionaries were sent from Spain by the order of King Philip II. He wanted to get in on the missionary activity as well, so he sent Spanish missionaries, Franciscans, to Japan to assist the Jesuits. Now, at this point, the Jesuits and the Japanese authorities had reached a somewhat stable arrangement. You bring the Franciscans in, like Franciscans tend to do, <laughs> they're beautiful and wonderful, but they, up, they, they upended the status quo in many ways. So the, 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 the calm that had ensued was, was really upended. The tensions, the authorities, uh, the tensions between the church and the authorities really kind of bubbled over. Things really hit, hit a tipping point when the Japanese seized a Spanish ship that was just off the coast of Japan and it was found to be carrying uh, Spanish artillery. Well, that was enough for the emperor. And through uh, one of his uh, imperial delegates, he ordered that 26 Christians ought to be put to death, ought to be sentenced to death. So this group, like I said, it was comprised of uh, some Jesuits, three native Jesuits, those three Japanese Jesuits. You had some of the foreign Franciscan missionaries and you had several lay Catholics, all Japanese, women and children. The three of the best known of these, uh, these martyrs, this group were obviously St. Paul Miki, Another guy named uh, John of Goto and James of Kisai. None of these, none of those three men, none of the martyrs in this case were priests. Um, Paul Miki was in formation to become a Jesuit. Um, Kisai was a lay brother, and Goto was uh, he was a catechist in training. He was planning on entering the community. So they're sentenced to death, and like I said, they are marched 600 miles to Nagasaki. It took them about a month to get there. And along the way, they'd be passing towns and people would be jeering and ridiculing them. And there was torture along the way. And Paul Miki was especially known for the way in which he encouraged, the way in which he encouraged his companions. It was amazing, his, his witness. So he comes to, they come to the hill in Nagasaki, known as Martyr's Hill. And they're tied to these crosses. And from the cross, Paul Miki begins to preach. And this is recorded in the, um, the documentation. It says, the only reason for my being killed is that I have taught the doctrine of Christ. I thank God it is for this reason that I die. I believe that I am telling the truth before I die. After Christ's example, I forgive my persecutors, beginning with the emperor. I do not hate them. I ask God to have pity on all, and this line right here, and I hope my blood will fall on my fellow men as fruitful rain. <clears throat> Paul Miki and 25 of his companions, they were stabbed to death with lances February 5th, 1597, on this hill that became known as Martyr's Hill in Nagasaki, Japan. 
Shortly after their death evangelization efforts in Japan, they were pretty much ground to a screeching halt and missionary activity was next to impossible. They were driven out. Then, fast forward, <clears throat> almost 300 years later, when missionaries did finally return to Japan, it was around the 1860s, initially they found no trace of Christianity, none whatsoever. But as the missionaries settled in, as they became part of the community, as they began to be known as trustworthy, the hidden underground church emerged from hiding. And they discovered that there were thousands of Christians still persevering in the faith almost 300 years later in Nagasaki, despite not having priests or the presence of the formal hierarchical church in their midst for almost three centuries. Amazing, absolutely amazing. You know, it was Tertullian, right, the church father, who said that the blood of the martyrs, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of Christians. And over and over and over again throughout the church's history, those words have been proven true. I just think about the blood of the martyrs of Isaac Jogues, Jean de Brebeuf, and their companions watering, irrigating the soil of the Native Americans, the Iroquois, the Huron, and then just a decade or so later, out of that community emerges a young girl who would become the first Native American saint, Katiri Tekakwitha. Out of the blood of these martyrs, fertilizing the soil, comes this incredible faith, incredible faith, that we have the faith today because through the centuries of the church's history, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of men and women and children refused to capitulate, they refused to deny Christ, they refused to hide their faith. And in the supreme moment, the supreme test, they said, I am ready to go and give up my body, to give up my life, to inherit eternal life. They offered themselves so that we could have the faith. As St. Paul says, woe to us if we do not share the gospel. Woe to us if we do not. Amen.